wanted to ask you about Marjorie Taylor Greene. How concerned are you about her past posts, remarks, rhetoric? Um, what would you like to see done about her? What I'm concerned about is the Republican leadership in the House of Representatives who was willing to overlook, ignore uh, those uh, statements, uh, assigning her to the Education Committee when she has mocked the killing of little children at Sandy Hook Elementary School, when she has mocked the killing of teenagers in high school at the Marjorie Stoneham Douglas High School, what could they be thinking, or is thinking too generous a word for what they might be doing? It's absolutely appalling, and I think that the focus has to be on the Republican leadership of this House of Representatives for the disregard they have for the death of those children. They not only are they not interested in uh, gun safety and gun violence prevention by passing legislation for background checks legislation, which is overwhelmingly supported in a bipartisan way in the country. But to have someone who would mock, call it a fake, if those fake events onto the edge, is just beyond, it's just beyond any understanding of any regard that the House Republicans would have for the House of Representatives, for the Congress of the United States, and for the heartbreak of the families in Sandy Hook and at Marjorie Stone High School. It really, at Marjorie Stone Douglas High School, it's really beyond the pale. You're just going to have to ask them why they thought that that raised itself to the ele uh, level of something appropriate to do in the Congress of the United States. You see, the federal government operates with your tax dollars that you work very hard for. And all of those tax dollars pay our salaries, my salary and everyone else's salaries. As a matter of fact, those hard-earned tax dollars that the IRS makes sure that you send in, guess what? Those tax, do tax dollars pay for the buildings. They pay for the light. They pay for the bills, the lights. They pay for every single part. Now, if you hired a contractor to remodel your kitchen, would you let that contractor tear your kitchen apart, rip your cabinets out, put your kitchen sink out in the front yard, and then walk away and not finish the job but make you pay for it? No. Well, America, you're allowing the federal government to destroy our country. America, you are allowing our them to have our borders completely invaded every single day with over 200,000 illegals every month. Fentanyl coming across the border. Terrorists, yes, terrorists are coming across the border. And guess what? Now, this administration has abandoned Americans in Afghanistan. And next week, when Nancy Pelosi drags us all back up to Washington, do you know what we're voting on? The Green New Deal. No, they're calling it infrastructure $1.2 trillion. It's not infrastructure. You know what it is? It's step one of the Green New Deal. $7.5 billion in that infrastructure. Guess what it does? It's going to pay China to work on an infrastructure grid in the United States building electric vehicle charging stations. Yeah, did you know that? No, you didn't know that because there was a bunch of Republicans in the Senate that voted for this because it's bipartisan infrastructure. Well, I'm sorry if Republicans are calling paying China any money to do anything in the United States that has anything to do with our infrastructure then that is China first and America last. And that is not the kind of bipartisanship we want in the United States government. And then there's the $3.5 trillion budget that is the Green New Deal, that AOC gets to create something called the Climate Corps. It's her Antifa jobs program 
for all her little friends that she tells how to protest. Yeah, she did that on her Instagram page. It's an Antifa jobs program, that's what I call it. It's a big government monster that they're going to create to make sure that you're not putting out too much carbon because you're a bunch of climate centers. Did you know that? Yeah, you're climate centers. So our government, the Democrats, are completely bought in on Bernie Sanders' plan for America, AOC's plan for America with the Green New Deal that is going to force all vehicles sold in the United States by 2030 to be electric vehicles. You know what the budget does? It also converts buses to electric vehicles, ferries to electric vehicles, and will mandate by law for all of you to eventually, you can't drive your gas or diesel car or truck, you have to drive an electric vehicle. Now let's have a very serious discussion about this. I use this one example, there's so much, there's far more that the Green New Deal does. But this one is very serious because it's something every American can understand. Whether you're a Republican or a Democrat or an I don't care, you can understand this because most people have a car or a truck or have a friend that does. Now here's the situation. The government should never control the private business sector of our country. <laughs> but the Green New Deal forces Americans to switch to electric vehicles. Now I want you to think this through. Who makes the batteries? China. Thank you. China controls the battery market, not by a little bit. America cannot even compete. We are less than 10% in the battery market. China is 75%, 75% the battery market. Why, why would our government ever pass a policy that forces us to depend on communist China for our energy needs? Why would they do that? We know what happens with China. We get COVID-19. And that happens when you've got Dr. Fauci and our government cooperating and working with China. And now this government wants to cooperate and just hand a great big gift on a platter to China. Here, China, you're going to defeat America's economy because we're going to force Americans to drive electric vehicles and you get to supply the batteries. Oh, you know what, China? You get to build our infrastructure grid with electric vehicle charging stations. That is what we are voting on next week. Next week we are voting on that. And if you hear any Republican talk about, oh, I'm probably gonna vote for the infrastructure deal, you call them right now and tell them no. You tell them to vote no to the infrastructure deal because it is step one to the Green New Deal. You tell them to vote no to the budget, which is the Green New Deal. You tell them to vote no. And here's how serious I am about this. You see, I have, I have something that I do. It's called actually reading bills. Yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of a thing they don't do. They usually let the staff do it, but I actually read them. And I read them and I believe what they say because I know what happens when we vote on them. And this is everything. This is Nancy Pelosi's legacy. This is what she's going for. They want it. I'm so serious about stopping these two bills. Here's how, here's how serious I am. I have said that I will primary any Republican that votes for the infrastructure or the budget. <laughs> Thank you. As a matter of fact, I'm so serious. My leadership pack has raised over $250,000 and I have not picked up the phone and made a single call because Americans like you are donating. SASPAC.com, S-A-S-S-P-A-C.com. If you want to help me fund a primary against a feckless, weak Republican that is going to help the Democrats pass the Green New Deal, donate to sasspack.com. This is Roger Mitch McConnell uh, speaking, and it reminded me that 
I think sometimes we forget how bad some Trumpy Trump type politicians really are. Uh, not at their job, but no decorum, rude, saying just disgusting things. And it, it's a bit more than attention. Take Pelosi versus Marjorie Taylor Greene. This is only a couple of years ago, and I was like, wow. And nobody called it out. No wonder where we are now in 2024. This is, this is just the DNA of something really bad. Like, bad. She shouldn't really, in my mind, be allowed anywhere near politics. Or for that matter, a garbage bin. It's toxic. Wait, say it again. Good. We want everybody to know that. So, here's the deal. That's when I started paying attention, when Nancy Pelosi took the gavel. <laughs> and so I said, you know what? We make it work every single day in the real world. We're able to pay our bills. We're not in debt. We're able to achieve things. And I think it's time for real people to go to Washington. And so that's why I'm a member of Congress. And they don't like me very much. Thank you. And I love you because you are the people I understand. You see, I got to Washington and I wasn't there very long. It was literally the second day when we had to vote on the rules in Congress. And let me tell you what they decided to do. Nancy Pelosi and the Democrats decided that they were going to erase gender in the rules for the 117th Congress. The, yeah, imagine that. You can't say he, she, him, her, mother, father, daughter, son, brother, sister. I'm sitting there going, wait, have these people lost their minds? <laughs> oh, let me tell you, I found out a lot more how crazy they are. And they call me crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Which is really funny. <laughs> so we voted on that, and well, I voted against it, and so did a lot of other people, but the Democrats said, yeah, we don't believe in gender. We aren't going to say these pronouns and so forth. And then the days went on. Well, let me tell you, the bills that they introduce are atrocious. And I want to inform you all about something that I was shocked by. You wouldn't believe how many bills, as a matter of fact, most of them get passed by people saying their vote. We have 435 members of Congress, but yet here's what they do. With a handful of members, eh, maybe 10 or less Democrats and 10 or less Republicans, they call the bill to the floor and we vote on it. And the Democrats, because they're voting on all of their bills, go, yay. And then all of us Republicans are like, nay. But sadly, some Republicans say yay, which I still haven't figured out. And then it passes. Well, I want to tell you, the first time I saw a bill pass like that, I think it was audible when my chin hit the floor. <laughs> you see, I believe that all members of Congress should actually vote. What do you guys think? Isn't that a novel idea? Well, you see, the Democrats in charge were so sweet to me, and then there were, there were, I think, what, 11 Republicans, something like that, 10 or 11, I have that list, I'm hanging on to it, that were so nice to give me some free time, and they decided to kick me off committees over a few things that they didn't like on Facebook some years back, and um, so it was pretty interesting. They said they didn't want me on committees, and I was like, oh, thank God, because the Democrats are running the committees, and they don't listen to Republicans anyways. And I'm the kind of person, I'm a business owner. I've accomplished a lot. I've been a competitive athlete, and I like to compete, and I hate to lose. If you want to give me some time on my hands, then you better believe I'm going to figure out smart ways to use it. So, I got with some, some people, some smart people, and I learned a little bit about floor procedure and floor action 
and, and how all this stuff works there in the chamber. And then I found out that I can make things happen. And I don't even have to be on committees. <laughs> and I found out I can force every member of Congress to vote on bills that are brought to the floor. Because you want to know, right? And I don't think this is a Republican issue or a Democrat issue. This is an American people issue. Everyone deserves to know how their member of Congress votes. So I started calling, Madam Speaker, I'd like the yeas and nays. <laughs> well, let me tell you, you'd have thought that a bomb went off in there and that would be a really bad thing. Because everyone was very upset with me about that. Oh, the audacity of that Marjorie Taylor Greene calling for recorded votes. How dare she put us on record? Yeah. Let me tell you all the things that were very offensive. Number one, guess what they had to do? When you call for a recorded vote, that means everybody's got to stop what they're doing and they have to walk <laughs> down to the chamber with the voting card, put it in there, and you vote. Well, does that sound so difficult to do? No. Oh, you'd have thought that it was the hardest thing ever. We were making these people work. Oh, the complaining, the complaining. Well, the Democrats were very upset because it was messing up the schedule because they're trying to ram through all the socialist bills they possibly can. You know, like the Equality Act that puts men and men, biological men in our bathrooms and in our girls' sports. How do you guys feel about that? All right, I'll come back to that. I have a good story for y'all. Okay, and they had a bunch of other bills, you know, like uh, making, uh, allowing felons to vote from prison. Do you think that's a good idea? Murder people and then you get to vote? I don't think so. Cori Bush likes that one, by the way. That was her bill. So here's, here's what we did. So I started calling for these recorded votes and Democrats were, you know, really upset because it was messing up the schedule and it was taking a lot of time. And everybody had to stop what they're doing. They had to stop their lunches and stop their fundraising calls and get up from their nap and all kinds of things and come down and vote. Well, it wasn't just the Democrats that were upset with me. It was the Republicans also. Yeah. Well, guess what? As a matter of fact, I got chewed out quite a few times. And it wasn't by Democrats because they don't talk to me. It was by Republicans. Yeah. Do you want to know what they said? Oh, yeah. Marjorie, you don't want to do this, Marjorie. I said, why? Why not? Well, you're going to put people on record. You just need to let these things pass quietly. And you can vote your conscience, Marjorie. You can say yay or nay. I was like, uh, that's not what I'm here for. I know how to do a job and I like to work hard. But, <laughs> just like you, just like, uh, just like all of you, just like the American people, well, except the ones that love getting paid their, their bailout checks and staying home and won't go to work. That's another issue. So, I got chewed out for making people vote. And it was Republicans that didn't like it. Well, we can just go with the R-I-N-O's. <laughs> Y'all want names, don't you? <laughs> See, this is what they don't understand. And it's on both sides of the aisle. They've been there so long that they only know how to function together. And they forget who they work for. They work for you. Well, let me tell you, once we started putting them on record and calling for recorded votes, and I started getting help from my friends in the House Freedom Caucus, by the way, and I started getting help from people like Matt Gates, and we started calling for recorded votes. Well, that changed things, and here's how it changed. For instance, there was one week, there were 28 bills that were set to go out there, and I said, put it on Twitter, because evidently Twitter is where you tell everybody everything, unless you get kicked off, right? <laughs> I said, I'll be calling for the yays and nays. And uh, then all of a sudden, magically, boy, that list got dropped down. 
There was only five bills that came through that week. And I'll tell you one more thing that really, really sets them off. It's when I ask for a motion to adjourn. Oh. Well, that really upset people. A motion to adjourn is very important. It's when you're saying Congress needs to go home. Congress needs to stop. I, I want to call for a motion to adjourn every single day.